Hey, remember me? Yeah, I know it's been a while since I posted a video. I've just been busy working. I also realized that this is a rather long video, but I thought that, hey, if HPI guys could put out an hour long video, then I could too. But we got a lot to go over, so let's get to it. And just like the Pro Street Square Body build, we are going to set the body aside and focus on the chassis. This chassis is going to get heavily modified and there's going to be a lot of test fitting to that body. And it's just easier if it's not prepped and finished and ready to go. I don't want to risk damaging a paint job. So let's go over the plan here. This U-shaped thing right there, that is the fuel tank. And this car, it's got a two gallon fuel cell in the trunk of the car, so we will not be needing the fuel tank. We also need to get it out of the way because we are gonna be installing a four link suspension. So pretty much all of this right here is just gonna get cut out. We don't need any of it. Now luckily, the bottom of the chassis pan will make a nice floor to replace it. If you guys cannot picture it in your head, don't worry, here's a photo. It's kind of hard to tell in a photo, but this is more of a triangulated four link than what you get when you have the two bars running parallel that most four links are set up for. Now I am kind of lucky as I got two of these to work on. So I could hack one up, do all the test fitting, and know exactly what I need to do to the finished product. And I'm going to say this up front now just so there is no confusion later on down the road. Throughout the entirety of this video, you guys are going to be seeing me interchanging the black body and the white body. I use the two chassis interchangeably just for test fitting and mock-up. So you guys will see the white body in one frame, then the black body in the next. Now with the black chassis pretty hacked up, I learned exactly where I do need to cut and where I do not need to cut on the white chassis here. Now with all these holes drilled, it just kind of makes this next step a little bit easier. Basically, I just go back in with my nippers and I just connect the dots to cut it all out. Now that hole is kind of gnarly looking, but we do need to preserve these frame rails on the side of the chassis here. Off camera, I just cut them down as far as I could and then just sanded everything flush and smooth. And the body did get real flimsy at the back since I cut out most of the support, so I just went in and filled in all the hollow casts with some super glue to strengthen everything back up. I also got a little overzealous on my cutting here, so I had to make a little bitty patch with a chunk of her sale sign. And once I find the interior tub, I'll show you guys exactly how this is going to mock up. Oh, here it is. I hinted at it briefly earlier, and you guys probably saw the intro photos. But this section right here, this is going to be the base for our four link. So being that I have a 3D printer now, I went to Colt's 3D and I found a 4-link and a 9-inch rear end. I got all those glued up into the black chassis just for test fitting. And uh, yeah, this is going to work out just fine. It's not exactly perfect to the real car. But I do have to tell you, they only built 100 of the V10 drag packs. And not two of them were exactly the same spec. That means one of them may be set up like this, so this could still be extremely accurate. I just don't know. By nature, four links are extremely adjustable, and what I'm trying to do is get this lined up just to kind of give you guys a preview of how this meaty tire is going to fit up in here. I'm going to get the chassis made it up to the body here real quick so I can show you our next obstacle we got to deal with. 
since I hacked all of that out, there is no trunk, so to speak, just a great big wide open hole. You guys know me, I'm just going to use a chunk of for sale sign to kind of fill in that hole there. I'm going to do the same thing to the gaps on these frame rails here. With that piece there glued in place, I'm just going to go around the whole perimeter there and then off camera, I just cut them down flush. I also cut out that section in the middle there for the trans tunnel. With the frame rails built, boxed in, and all the gaps filled, I'm just going to trace the outline of the chassis to that interior tub. Now that we can see those lines, I'm going to do a quick little sanity check just to see how far off center we are. We got 7 mil on that side, and ha, we got 7 mil on this side too. I don't know how I managed to do that. I do not have any real measurements, but looking at the photos, it looks like the mounts for the control arms on the four length, they're about 5 inches away from the frame rail. At this scale, one millimeter is close enough to one inch. So I just cut a strip of tape five millimeters thick and that's gonna act as my spacer. Now that I know all my spacing is square, I'm just gonna take the control arm mount and I am gonna wedge it in place in the corner of those tape lines there. You guys should know by now that I am terrible at math, so I do a whole lot of sanity checks. That checked out to be about 9.5 millimeters. Over here, we're looking, well, right at about 9.5 millimeters. It's hard to tell because that front piece there has a bevel to it, and there's some parallax looking through the camera here. That's about 5 millimeter, and down here, eh, about 5 millimeter. So I'm going to do the exact same thing using tape and measurements to lay out where we're going to mount our upper control arms. And just like last time, I'm just going to double check all my measurements to make sure I'm exactly where I want to be. We're exactly 14 and a half millimeters on both sides, so yeah, I could live with that. Alright, so back to filling that big hole in the back of the chassis. I'm going to get that chunk of for sale sign wedged in there. I'm just going to temporarily clamp it in place with my part holders I use for when I paint things. I'm going to give it the old eyeball test. That looks even enough to me, so I'm going to make it permanent by drawing a line with a sharpie. No going back here. At my local hobby store, quote unquote local, because it's still about 40 minutes away, I found some 080 rod. And it is purely by accident that this is the same diameter as this roll cage I had printed out. Even though I got a line as a reference, I still do not trust it. So I'm going to tape that piece into place temporarily and get some measurements. Once I'm happy with the location of that piece, I'm just going to make it permanent and I'm going to move on to filling in some more gaps. The back of the trunk, it is rounded because the losers that had the V6 version of this car, they actually had a spare tire in there. Us SRT guys, our wheels were too big and wide to fit in the trunk, so they literally just gave us a can of fix a flat in case we have a blowout. For the rear diff to center it, I was going to lay out a center line, then I heard this really loud crash behind me. It was this cat jumping up into my paint booth. It happened on the dog's watch, so the dog is grounded. And I'm just yelling at him like he understands English. Anywho, back to the rear diff. 
I have it just loosely taped into place then I'm gonna use this wheel and tire assembly here just to figure out exactly where I need this thing to be I'm gonna use that mounting tab on the wheel and then just do my best to line it up by eye with the axle tube to know if I need to go forward or back with it I'm actually happy with exactly where that is sitting it looks centered it's gonna be nice and low yeah I'm happy with that so I'm just gonna take a quick measurement just to kind of get in my mind and it looks like we are about 15 millimeters there and 14 there so I just need to go forward just a millimeter I'm not the kind of brag but uh I just kind of lined that thing up by eye I was only off by one millimeter all right now that the axle centered and sitting where I want it to go I need to figure out how long to make these control arms I'm gonna do the best I can to get inside of the control arm mount where the eyelid is then I'm just gonna measure that to the center of the axle tube now behind the scenes I've already got all my measurements done and I got a template drawn out so I know exactly where I need to put the mounts on the rear axle I got real lucky with this 3D model I found. If you look real close, right in the middle, there is a hole. That is the absolute dead center, both top and bottom and side to side of that rear diff. It's going to make this next step a whole lot easier. The way I had the upper control arms mount, the pumpkin on the rear diff is too wide. So I got to put a little notch in it here so I can get the bracket in there. I'm going to use my razor saw to get a nice straight score line, then I'm just going to sand it down to where it's just flush with the top of the axle tube. With the notch done, I made a jig, basically a little section of wood with some tape on it. That is going to hopefully just kind of help me hold everything in place so I can get some glue applied. And for the lower control arm mounts, I just measured out so many millimeters. I put a thin piece of tape around it and then just butted the mount up against that tape. Now, there's really no way to positively locate any of those control arm brackets on the rear diff here. But I got pretty, pretty close. If I put it on a straight edge, there is barely any gap. I can't fit a piece of paper under it, but you could see just a hint of daylight. That's close enough for me. Now, while they're not perfectly straight, they are within a fraction of a millimeter, but more importantly, they match up perfectly with the body. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to go through and beef up the entire chassis with some tubing. Being that these are unibody cars, they really, really had to reinforce the chassis. On the real cars, they just use subframe connectors, but I want to do a chassis halo of sorts, much like they do on the latest model drag pack here. Again, I want to reiterate that no two drag packs were the same. You could spec them any way you want. So I'm just looking at a bunch of different screenshots and I'm just putting together something that I think looks good for me. With a calibrated eyeball and a few careful bends, I'm just going to line the entire bottom of the chassis with this tubing.
take your time here eventually we will have something that looks like this in one of my screenshots they had built in a drive shaft loop into all this bracing I really like the way that looks so I'm gonna build my own In the first photo I showed at the beginning of the video here, uh, we could see that the control arm mounts, they also had tubing and bracing built into them. I had to get just a bit creative here because I didn't want to tie the interior tub and the chassis together permanently just yet. So I glued those pieces to the interior tub and left them a little bit long so they kind of wedge into place. That way when I take all this apart, hey, they're still in place where they need to be. But when we mate the two pieces back together, the tubing is actually touching, so it looks like they're welded and everything is nice and solid. So there is a problem, and this did not come from me cutting or hacking anything up. I think this is actually a design flaw from Ravel. And I say that because it happens on both chassis, even when I interchange the parts. That section of the engine bay, it does not fit, nor does it set flush when we have the interior tub in place where it needs to go. Now luckily, I have that spare chassis so I can do a bunch of cutting and test fitting without potentially ruining my main piece. My solution is just to simply cut that engine bay piece off. You can see I also kind of hacked this thing up real bad too. The real car uh, doesn't have the fuse block, the washer fluid, the overflow tank, none of that. So I just cut it all out and used, yeah, you guys guessed it, some pieces of for sale sign to bridge all the gaps. So with both of these pieces sitting in their mounting tabs the way Ravel designed this to all fit together, they had molded that about an eighth of an inch too short. Alright, so now that we know what we need to do to fix this, let's get to cutting. So with the front out of the way, we could jump to the back of the chassis and we could get to fill in some holes. Since this car does not have exhaust, it just runs open headers. We do not need any mounting tabs for any exhaust, so I just used some pieces of sprue to fill those gaps, glued them in, and then just sanded everything flush. Now those holes filled and smoothed out, the next problem is the rear strut mounts, they are not going to allow us to fit this big meaty tire up in the wheel well. And since we are using coilovers, we have absolutely zero need for these strut mounts. So I am just going to cut them out. Oh yeah, we got plenty of room now. 
Now the other side, it is nice and smooth and cleaned up. So now I'm just going to go to town with a little piece of sandpaper and just clean it up the best I can. Now being that all this is going to be hidden behind the wheel and the tire, it does not have to be perfect. As you can see, we got just a little bit of ghosting from the molding process, but I could live with that. For the rear brakes, I'm just going to drill out that mounting hole the same diameter as the tube for the rear differential. Now I do not want to drill all the way through, so I just ran that drill bit all the way up into my pen vise, so I know when it bottoms out, that's all the further I need to drill. Now I don't know if you guys have ever tried to drill out 3D printed resin, but this stuff is so brittle that sometimes it just wants to crack and shatter instead of drilling. So if you guys do this, be extremely careful, go really slow, and if you feel like it's not going to cut, then just back out. Do not force it, because it will break. Alrighty, so that is just going to slide in like so. The problem is there is a whole lot of extra material there that we do not need. Since we do not need any of that extra material, I'm just going to cut it all off. Since I drilled that hole deep, we could still have a way to mount it to the rear diff. Now, with all that extra pieces cut off, we might have a bit of a problem here. On my pen vise, I did not tighten that chuck real tight because it was right on the flute of the drill bit and I didn't want to damage it. So that drill bit got pushed further up into the pen vise and I ended up not drilling as deep as I wanted to. Now luckily, it had still just barely kissed that, so there is a mark dead center, so not all hope is lost. I could still just drill it out here. I'm just going to have to play with this a little bit to get it mounted straight, but yeah, that'll still work. Now with the majority of the fabrication done, we could finally move on to paint. I had found these springs somewhere. I have no idea where they came from or what they came out of, 
but we're going to use them and we're going to make our coilover super realistic. Now we do have to use a metal etching primer on them since they are made out of metal. Otherwise the paint is going to flake right off. The springs are painted in Mopar blue and you guys would think with me being a Mopar guy that I would have that blue on hand. I do not. This Tamiya X4, it is close enough though. Damn it. So I was just about ready to glue these two pieces together to make them permanent. And then I just remembered something about this car. So let me get this engine torn out of this mock-up chassis real quick here. Then I'll show you what I'm talking about. All of the test fitting and mock-up that I have been doing, it is with the 6-speed out of the Viper. This car did not have a 6-speed. It had a power glide. So I'm going to get this guy assembled here real quick. And I had this wild notion just to reuse this one. So I had just taped the transmission pan in place so I could paint it a different color later. That ended up not working, so just ignore that tape. Other than a notch at the bottom for the dust cover, I'd say I got that thing skilled fairly decently. It is almost exactly the same length too, so that's awesome. The only difference is that it is wider and it's got that pan hanging off the bottom of it. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to figure out exactly where I need to cut to get this transmission unbolted. And it looks like that groove runs all the way around so I could just follow that and this cut will be nice and straight. So I got that guy glued in place and I got it mocked up in the donor chassis. Even though it is really wide, it is still going to fit, but just barely. So the engine is still sitting straight and level. The tail shaft is about center in the trans tunnel, so this will definitely work. We're just going to have to do a little bit of work to make it fit. On our keeper chassis, you can see I got to cut out all of that bracing and modify the transmission mount. So off camera, I got the cutting and sanding and modifying. This is what I came up with. Really all I did was cut out the bracing and narrow up that trans mount. So the idea now is just to skeletonize that trans mount, maybe painted gold, just so it matches the one on this drag pack. It's a slight setback, but even with these changes, it's still centered and the engine is still setting level. Well, mostly level. On the black chassis, the very first thing I did was cut out that bottom lip, just because I knew that oil filter was going to be in the way. I had forgot to do that on this chassis. Now I do realize that notch is going to be kind of ugly, but do not worry. Once we get the dust cover in place, it will cover that notch up. Nobody will know what's there. Alrighty, there was just one more thing that I completely overlooked and forgot about and was panicking because I didn't have a plan. 
And that was, what were we going to do about exhaust? Now, luckily, I had an extra VTS RAM in my collection, so I just wouldn't snag the V10 headers out of it. And these things fit so well and cleared everything almost perfectly that it's kind of scary how well these worked out. So I went back to my reference photos to see what I could do about the collectors on those headers. And then I realized that I had forgot to put in these center bars that run parallel with the trans tunnel. And it was right about here when I realized that if I keep making last minute changes, I am going to run out of time before I get this finished by the deadline. So I forced myself into the next permanent step. And that is mounting that interior tub to the body. And since I had cut off all the rear locating tabs for that interior tub, I'm going to use some slow setting glue to give me time to position it just right. Once I get that thing located where I want it and I'm happy with where it's sitting, I'm just going to clamp it in place and set it aside and let that glue work its magic overnight. So with the interior tub in permanent where it needs to be, we could finally start assembling the trunk. A while ago you guys saw me glue in that bar, now I'm just doing my best to kind of wedge this down in there and then roll it around on the fender wells just to kind of make it take the shape of the trunk. After a bit of fiddling I finally got the front wedged in place, now I'm just going to lock it all in with a bit of super glue to make it permanent. I'm going to walk around the perimeter there just to make sure it's all glued in, then I'm going to cut off all the excess. I know, I know, this looks ugly, but it is all going to be hidden. All that really matters to us is the bottom side, because that part will be visible. Since everything is together now in one piece, I could glue in the rest of these structural supports. I had originally intended these to kind of cover the gap there between the body and the frame rails. So these bits here, they ended up being kind of twofold. As I mentioned, they cover the gaps and they tie in all the structural parts together. Now that all the fabrication, everything is done, we could get it into some paint. Finally, yeah I know guys, we're like three weeks into this. I should also mention I am not a fan of using Tamiya acrylics as a base coat. It just this Tamiya white, it is the closest I have to the PW7 white paint coat that Dodge uses. And now that I'm going back on the voiceover, I had a first gen Dakota and a second gen Ram both in that same white. I might have a can of touch up spray paint in this factory body color somewhere in my toolbox. Oh well, too late now. So with that paint drying, we're going to start assembling our front suspension. Now believe it or not guys, but other than the brakes, the valving and the shocks and the spring rates on the coils, the front suspension is completely stock. Well, it also didn't have a sway bar because, you know, drag race, we don't need that. So I'm just going to cut it off here real quick. Now being that everything is indeed stock, I'm just going to paint it all in a raw steel color because that's what it was.
If you guys remember in the screenshot I had posted earlier, this thing still had the factory dust plate inspection cover, whatever you want to call that thing. So we're going to include it. And since I had some semi-gloss black in the airbrush, I figured I might as well paint the fan assembly. Uh, we'll see more of that in part 3, or part 4, part 10. I don't know. It's going to be a long build. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but there seems to be a shortage of Tamiya jar paints, specifically the shades of black. So I sourced out some of their lacquers, and I'm really liking them. Look at this. You guys just saw me paint that. It is already completely 100% dry. And I don't know why, but this seemed to really stress me out because I am painting black over white. If there is any bleed through, any mistakes, there is absolutely zero chance of hiding black under white paint. If anything goes wrong, I would be stripping this chassis and starting completely over fresh. I realize it may seem like I'm laying this on thick and heavy, however, I am not. I got the airbrush tuned as far back as I can just so it will still shoot out some paint. And this is lacquer, so it is drying extremely quick. Basically what I'm saying is there is no wet paint going down. The second it hits the body, it's already dry. So a uh, moment of truth. Let's peel all this tape off and see how well I did. Or how well I did not do. Yeah, think about that. Actually guys, uh, I'm not good at building suspense. I did a fairly decent job at masking. This turned out just fine. And peeling all this tape off, you guys might be just getting an idea of how wasteful and expensive this hobby can be. Have you all priced Tamiya tape lately? Or I guess just really priced anything in general. Being alive is expensive. And uh, I've been debating on saying this, but uh, fuck. The wife dropped the D word on me a few months ago, and uh, been kind of on my own. If I didn't have a stockpile of unbuilt kits and supplies, I'd have almost zero content for y'all. And I don't mean to sound dark and gloomy, guys. Do not worry about me. I am interviewing replacements every other night, so I am doing just fine. Anywho, let's get back to the build. By this time, all the paints on the front suspension components are dry, so we can finally start putting that thing together. Really, so far, this is the only thing really box stock about this build so far. So we can just follow the kit instructions and put all this together. Earlier you guys saw me mocking up the rear forelink with some plastic tube. 
That was just temporary to make sure everything would fit. The final product here, I'm using some super thin wall aluminum tubing. And you guys are seeing just how much trouble I am having on this one singular run end. There is no way I'm going to do six more of those on camera. So just imagine that six more times and that is a rear suspension put together. As of right now, all of those links, everything is just kind of held together with friction. So I'm going to do a quick test fit of the wheels and tires to make sure everything is sitting where I want it to be before I make everything permanent with glue. And the front looks like it's sitting far forward. That is just parallax from the camera. I still need to mess with the back spacing on it. We will be diving into the wheels and tires in a later video because as of now, we are done with the chassis. As we approach the end of the video here, you guys know what to do. Have a good night.